This is uh, our second webinar uh, on a set of six, and it's looking at the skills of Gaelic football and uh, how you break them, how you break the skill down and build it up again. So, as you see in, in, in the, on the screen there, kicking for possession uh, was delivered by Roger Keenan uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm doing the hand fist pass and solo, which is a toe tap and bounce tonight. Uh, some of the slides you will see, coaches, uh, you'd have seen them at the start of Roger's presentation. Um, so we'll move them, we'll move through them fairly quickly, even though there'll be a possibility there'll be coaches on tonight that might not have seen Rogers. And by the way, if you go on, go into us the GA YouTube, uh, you will get Roger Keenan's and all these webinars will be up uh, uh, on the also J YouTube. So as you see, there's another four being delivered after after tonight, just to, let, to make you aware, coaches, tackling and evasion uh, on the 2nd of December, uh, right through to crouch lift and blocking on the 3rd of March. So um, hopefully, as I say, you'll get some out of this tonight, coaches, so we'll just move on here. The content tonight, uh, coaching the skills, and as I said to you, it's the hand fist pass and the solo, which is a toe tap and bounce. Now, breaking the skill down, putting it together again, spotting best practice, spotting and fiction. And um, in brackets there, you, might, you, may, you see the words fatal flaws. I'll, I'll touch on that uh, later on in the presentation and then delivering the whole skill. Uh, guiding philosophy coaches. Um, I, know, I know especially in tonight's presentation and, and, and the sixth presentation as well, it's mainly for on the age, but let me tell you, it can be for seniors as much as on the age because, you know, in, in some cases, unfortunately, some seniors maybe are maybe not performing the, the skill correctly, and they're not, and by that they're not getting the end result. It's maybe not working for them the way this it should be working for them. And so it's you know this webinar as much as the rest of them. Uh, we all can learn from it. And I know the people and the coaches that signed in tonight, a lot of the coaches is working maybe with on the age. Yes, there's a number of coaches that's working at senior. And I believe it'll be useful for everybody. And when you, you know, we, we talk about warning um, and you want to one, you want to one at, at on the age level also, absolutely. But it's not one at all costs. Um, at the end of the day, you have to think about the bigger picture. And maybe if you look what's what's put in, what's in blue there, uh, when winning is kept into perspective, there's room for fun in the pursuit of victory. I think that is key, uh, especially at on the age level. Uh, it's very important. Okay, right, we'll move on here. Skill development, where does it start? The fundamentals, I'm sure you have all heard about the fundamentals now. Uh, and that is key. The fundamentals, uh, the four-year-old till roughly the seven-year-old. Yes, you're going to say to me, Tony, this, yes, uh, young boys and girls, uh, they develop at different stages. Um, no, so at the end of the day, it's roughly around that age level of four to seven, uh, the fundamentals, the, phys the physical liturgy. It's not all about the sport that... Uh, you're aiming the kids for well. That's well. We're focusing on Gaelic football tonight here, so uh, it's not all about maybe Gaelic football at that young age. It's about that the agility, balance, and coordination. Let's like talk about the ABCs: agility, balance, and coordination. They talk about the RJTs: the running, jumping, and throwing, and then they talk about the CPKSs of Gaelic games: catching, passing, kicking, and striking. Those are very, very important elements, no matter what sport you want to play. No matter what sport you want to go on to play later on in your career, young ones need them. If they don't have the agility, balance, score, any of those, they're going to struggle at any sport and, and Gilly games as much. Uh, I just want to tell, you might see my, my wee red laser there. I, I just want you maybe to focus on that uh, we picked you on your right hand side up the top. Uh, that's what you'd call a fundamental session happening in a wee hall or maybe in a, I think it's in a school. 
and you might see wee hurdle, hurdles there. That's children just hopping over hurdles or running over hurdles. You might see that a hurdle there and a wee, a wee ball, just maybe a wee soft ball, dribbling the, the ball around the, the markers. You see a wee ladder there, a, a young boy stepping through the ladder. You see hoops. You see a ball on the ground, a, 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 a young lad dribbling the ball on the ground. Uh, them hoops, I'm, I'm sure they were used for maybe bouncing the ball with the right hand when you're going towards the right, then going diagonally left and bouncing the ball with your left hand in a, in a hoop uh, uh, there, and then going right again diagonally for another hoop and bouncing the right and the left. So you're learning from a very young age, you're learning on both sides. You know, you know the bounce. The bounce, it's very important. Uh, a, a player can bounce the ball of both hands. So, as I say, they're getting the fundamental skills, uh, which is so important when they go on later on in their careers to have the, those fundamentals. Uh, and as I say, it says, it says there, it says there the, the skills that underpin sports specific GA skills. So, development of good motor skills is prog progressive and elementary to the good execution of sports specific skills. And then at the bottom there in the in yellow writing, the fundamental movement skills are the foundation for the sports specific skills. And that is key that, that you know, it's, it's not, you're going to say, Tony, where we hadn't the fundamentals 30, 20 or 30 years ago. Well, the fundamentals might be in, uh, uh, this was 15 years maybe or so but uh, as i say when 30 years ago maybe when i was on the way to 40 years ago uh you know the young ones were doing a lot more physical activity outside and the, they were a lot more as i say on the farm whatever the climbing trees jumping gates whatever they were getting the abcs and their jts young ones nowadays are not getting it and we have to provide it for them uh they're not getting it as much as they uh, when we have to provide this here, the fundamental. So that's key coaches. Now, three phases of skill development. It's the early, early one, lots of errors. The, the coaches, the coaches giving instructions and direction to the young players. Um, it's like a child when they go to walk for the first time coaches. How long does it take a child to take his first few steps? You know, hundreds and hundreds of, of wee mistakes to make before they make that first, as I say, them first few steps. It's just the same when it comes to to to, to Gaelic games, you know, the skills. They're not going to pick them up straight away. They're going to make mistakes. So don't worry about the mistakes. Don't worry about them. Uh, just the more touches and the more practice they get, the better they come. Less, then the, the intermediate stage, they're starting to perform the basic skills. And then when you go on to the advanced level, it's automatic to them. They can do it under pressure. and underneath there at the bottom coaches no matter i don't care no matter how much knowledge you know or no matter no no matter wh how um wh what background you have in gilly games spot and fix and praise at all levels praise children love praise senior players love praise you can't be negative with players you have to be giving them praise all the time and as i say spotting and fixing and we'll touch on that as we go through the presentation Again, sports specific skills are best taught when the coach knows the components, knows the observable com components of the skill. I, is it necessary for the coach to, to be able to do every skill uh, perfectly? The coach, not necessary, not necessary. One of your players could be able to maybe demonstrate the skill for the rest of the group. Yes, if the coach can do it, great, maybe at that young age level, but it's not the be all and end all coaches so don't be put off at that just because you might not be able as a coach you can as i say you can get one of your better players whatever as long as you're able to observe and you know the components of the skill that that's very important that you can coach that across to your players spot spot and fix and give plenty of praise again feedback about skill performance and uh, instruct how to modify and correct and no, t t teach just one component of a very diff difficult skill at a time. What we're saying there is if you're doing what we're doing tonight here, the toe tap, don't just tell a young child you drop the ball from the right hand to the right, to the right foot and you, you, have, you have to have your foot turned up, you can't have your leg bent. One at a time and the child will take it on a lot easier. And again, at the, at the bottom, at the bottom, in yellow, let them play. 
let the children play. Okay, uh, again, different approaches here for skill development. <clears throat> uh, I, a player who I played with in my career and a player who I played against with at, uh, at club level, um, but I played with him at county level. A couple of years ago, I met him and he does a lot of work around his own club at on the age level. And he said to me, Tony, uh, I'm the why, why we have a wee problem. And I says, what's your problem? Well, they go with, with on the twelves maybe on a Saturday morning at eleven o'clock, and um, he says, getting them all there at eleven, Tony, uh, impossible. Ten and a quarter past eleven, they're you know some of them maybe close to the field are walking in further off the field. The parents or guardians are taking them to the field, but this is you can never get them in time. And uh, he says, just one day off the top of my head, just it was by chance. I said to them, leaving the thin. See, see if you're here next Saturday morning at 11 o'clock on the button, we'll start after the game. And he said, Tony, they were there at a quarter to 11 the following week. They made their parents or guardians take them tech earlier that they wouldn't miss the game. So that's what that means up at the top there in blue writing coaches. Whole part whole. Start off the game. Then look, look at to see how the game's going and then something that maybe you feel that can be fixed. Maybe the kicking's not great in the game. Maybe the hand pass is not great. But whatever it is, then you can stop the game and go into a, a few drills or activities to fix that and then finish off the game again. Brilliant. Kids, senior players love games. And yes, there's time for drills and there's time for activities. No problem, coaches. Absolutely no problem. And I can understand that fully. You know, I wear the T-shirt myself. But as I say, um, sometimes we can have too many, maybe too many markers down, too many cones down, and we're asking we Johnny or me to run from a, a green cone to a to a red cone the whole evening. No decision making, absolutely no decision making for that child. How are they ever going to go out and play a game? There's going to be no cones on a on a Sunday or a Tuesday or Wednesday night. But as, what I'm saying is, there's no harm in starting off the game. Yes, if you don't want to, no problem. The other side of the screen there, part, whole, part. Then start out. If you want to start with your drills, ground, game, and then finish with your drills. That's no problem. But uh, as I say, I'm giving you another option. And as I say, um, that friend of mine told me that that worked for him. He started with the game and finished with the game. And he said, Tony, the kids just came out in droves and they were there in time for the session. Uh, Players pass through various stages in learning the skills. Um, the individual's ability, absolutely. There's be some kids in your club at six and seven and eight years of age, or when you're playing on the eight, whatever, or on the ten, that they're very good, and this other kids maybe not as, as strong as them. So they all develop at a, at a different stage. Uh, again. The, 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 quality, the coach is so important. The coach, be coaching, coaching, coaching and getting, as I say, the key points, spotting the correct and giving them plenty of praise. They'll come on leaps and bounds with that type of coaching. And then individual practice. You know, you know if you're there to feel a couple of evenings a week, you need more. You know, you know, young ones, no matter what level, right through, as I say, no matter what level, the more individual practice, out at home practicing with the football, uh, toe tapping, uh, throwing the ball up in the earth, whatever, you don't have a friend, high catching, all the skills you need to be practicing at home. And then the, 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 the club the club will do the coaching for them, but you have to be doing more than that, than the club. So young ones out practicing themselves. Okay, there's just a wee model, um, the idea model. Just the word idea when you go to coach. Think about it. The first letter, I, the coach will introduce the skill in a way that it's easy to understand. That's key, coaches. It's, that it's easy for your kids. No matter, I'll say it again, no matter what level, senior players, it has to be explained properly to them. D, demonstrate. Again, I talked earlier about the coach. Doesn't have to, it can be a player who can demonstrate the skill. Get the key points of the skill across. 
E for execute. Again, it can be the player or the coach will, will execute the skill in the form of a drill activity. And A, the coach will, will provide feedback while the activity goes ahead, goes on. Um, you have to ask yourself when you are coaching too, are you achieving what you're trying to achieve? Are you achieving from that drill activity? Is it working? Uh, are you achieving it? Do the players understand what they're trying to achieve? Uh, how do you adjust the drill to make it harder or easier? And I'm going to talk also about the stepper model. And, and again, getting the, your points across the group is so important. And the stepper model is S for so space. So the more space, so the less space can make it harder or easier. It's according to what the activity or the game or the drill you're doing. Likewise time, likewise equipment, likewise players. More players might make that activity or game harder. Or less players might make it harder or easier. And rules, conditions, putting a condition on the game. Well, it's one solo. Well, that's no solo. Well, you have to go buy a, a player before you can pass. Whatever the, whatever it is, you have to play the ball wide. It has to go through so many players before you can score. Time limit on, on every player in the ball. You can put the condition to make it easier or harder for your players. And we'll just move on. Hopefully this will play for you now. We're going, going into the skills here now. Tonight, as I said to you to start, we're focusing on the solo, the toe tap and the bounce and the hand and fist pass. So hopefully watch this clip. Hopefully it will play for you. And this is a bounce in its context. And away come on, man. Brian Mallet past the 65, past the 45. Heading towards the 20, going towards the 13, takes the shot. And it's over the bar. Turns onto his right. And that's over the bar. It's his first point from play, but his fourth in this All-Ireland semi-final. The bounce is a basic technique in Gaelic football used to play the ball in order to keep possession without fouling. The ball may not be bounced more than once in succession. However, the ball may be bounced alternately with the toe tap to keep possession as part of a solo run. Moving effortlessly forward, just two points behind. Haven't started well, but loads it up towards Billy Coulter. He's losing his marker. Two of them there. Support arriving. They love their hurling down in North Kerry. The Gooch thought about distributing it again. Scored a cracking goal against our mouth and into McNulty. Hey, Mulligan, they've got to work a score from this. Oh, Mulligan, options to his left. Still Mulligan! Mulligan! Here, on. Here he comes. Nicely forward there for Ronan McGarity. A good support play from Keith Higgins. Higgins going for it. And Higgins has put it over the bar. What well, one to pick. That's the score of the match. Great interchange. OK. Hopefully that played for you, coaches. Now, we'll look at the coaching points of the bounce coaches. We'll, um, we'll just go through, the, just listen to this here and watch this here, coaches. Here we see the bounce technique being performed by an elite player running with the ball. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the bounce. Hold the ball with both hands. Head down, eyes on the ball. Release the ball into one hand, spreading the fingers behind the ball. Extend the arm, pushing the ball into the ground with the bouncing hand. Extend both arms towards the ball as it returns into the hands. Spread the fingers of both hands to create a W shape and cushion the ball into the hands. Hold the ball securely with both hands and bring it into the body. Here we see the... Okay, just before I move on to common errors of the bounce, uh, of the bounce coaches. Uh, and, uh, yes, and we're focusing on the bounce tonight. But there's one thing I'm sure you'll be thinking, will I say it or not? When the ball comes back up into the hand again, the, uh, the speaker or the commentator might not have mentioned it because he was just focusing on the bounce. But whenever you're taking in, when that ball comes up into the hand again, he talked about you know, the head, hands and feet coaches. Think about that when you're coaching because it all evolves around the head, 
the hands and the feet. So he talked about head down, catching the ball. See when that ball comes up to the hand again, for them next four steps, that's when the players should be looking up, scanning, seeing another pass on, another hand pass on, another kick on. And then if not, then he get the head down again to do the next the next bounce. In fact, it, it wouldn't be a bounce. You'd have to do a toe tap because you can't bounce twice to the road coaches. So look, we'll move on here now to the common errors. Errors, and, and uh, we'll play this wee video. Bouncing the ball with two hands is a common error when learning the bounce technique. This may lead to difficulty performing the technique while running. To correct this error, ensure that the ball is transferred from both hands to the bouncing hand just prior to the bounce. Bouncing the ball too soft or too hard is another common error which may result in the ball not returning from the ground properly. To correct this error, extend the fingers behind the ball to aid control and push through the ball to ensure adequate force is applied. Attempting to catch the ball with one hand is a common error. This may result in the player failing to catch or fumbling the ball. To correct this error, Ensure that both arms are extended towards the ball as it returns, spreading the fingers of both hands to secure possession. Hold the ball securely with both hands and bring into the body. Bouncing. Okay, that's, and now the, there's a coaching card, coaches. And I said to start that this presentation will be up on the OCJ YouTube. So there's the coaching card for the bounce and uh, the common errors and all. So you have all the key points there. Um, and as I say, as we go through the presentation, uh, there's a wee chat box, I think, for the right of your screen. You can you can put in any questions or uh, I'm, I'm gonna be uh, asking you a few as the a, as a presentation goes on here, coaches. But if you have any queries or any questions, uh, Gareth will pick them up. I don't see the, 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 the chat box. But Gareth will pick them up and we'll deal with them at the finish up if you if you don't mind. So, but please use the chat box and uh, we'll do our best. Uh, any queries or anything, maybe you don't agree with all that has been presented here tonight. No problem. Want to hear your opinion. So again, we'll just move on. Now we're going on to the toe tap. And we'll just watch us, uh, force coaches, and then. Two against one here. Billy Joe Patton beaten in the air there by Seamus Moynihan. Away he comes surging forward once again. Again towards Higgins. Now they build up with Kilcoyne once more. Mayo need a score from this attack, you feel. It's good, it's on its way and it's over the bar. The solo or toe tap in Gaelic football is a technique used to play the ball in order to keep possession without fouling. It is used to carry possession to a better position or to evade an opponent. A solo run may incorporate a sequence of alternating bounces and toe taps, or just be a series of toe taps. First Connor Mortimer losing it here to Higgins. He's so pacey. Maybe he thought the wisest course here is to take my point because he was in for a goal opportunity, certainly. Just over four minutes to go. Dermot Masterson. Well, he just started playing it over and back till the chance was lost. Alan Dillon. The fans will feel it's going to be Mayo's day. Alan Dillon breezing in and fisting it over the bar. A real bundle of energy. Busy. Scored a cracking goal against Armagh when Ender McNulty made that. Uh... It's on towards Alan Brogan. A point behind. Alan Brogan, 20 metres out with the left, looking for the equaliser. It's over. Kilcoin going forward, everybody chasing after him, Darren McGee's after him, outside to Kevin O'Neill, it's on target! And Mulligan, they've got to work a score from this, Owen Mulligan, options to his left, still Mulligan, Mulligan, what a goal! Okay, happy enough for the toe tap. Um, now, we'll look at the, the coaching points of the toe tap. Here we see the solo technique being performed by an elite player. 
Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the solo. Hold the ball firmly with both hands. Keep the torso upright. Release the ball into the hand at the kicking side. Head down, eyes on the ball. Step forward with the non-kicking foot. Extend the wrist and drop the ball onto the kicking foot. When the foot impacts the ball, flick the toe upwards towards the body. Straighten the leg. Extend the arms forward to catch the ball. Okay, and then we'll just move on without any chat and watch the common errors for the toe tap. Dropping the ball with both hands or dropping the ball to the foot with the wrong hand is a common error when learning the solo technique. This may lead to difficulty keeping control of the ball, particularly when attempting to solo at speed. To correct this error, Ensure that the player drops the ball towards the kicking leg with the hand at the same side, that is, with the right hand when using the right leg and vice versa. Not using a straight leg to flick the ball upwards towards the body is another common error and may result in the player failing to control the ball. To correct this error, ensure the player kicks the ball at the end of the stride flicking the toe upwards to bring the ball back into the body. The most common error of all when performing the solo technique is soloing the ball too high. To correct this error, ensure the ball is cushioned back by flicking the toe upward on impact. Okay, and again, again, are there any questions that the finish up coaches will will, will will touch on it? But we'll just move on here. There's your two two tap coaching card. Uh, again, all the key points on it, the common errors, and uh, and as I say, it's it's good to be fit to relate to that. Okay, right. I'm going to show you a couple of wee clips here, and this is when I really do want you to. Um, to text them to the chat box coaches um these are a couple of we lads from my own club here that i, I just wanted them the other night there and um believe it or not believe it or not and um the lads are doing the two tap but they're deliberately there's a wee arrow or two and i want to see can you pick up the error and believe it or not i don't think the error was touched on in them last couple of slides and by the way them slides and videos i got from the ga website so they're on the ga website them also but uh i just want you to watch this first i want you to watch this first lad fergal here and um as i say he's deliberately making a mistake here when he's doing the toe tap i want you to text them what the mistake is it's just it's one mistake i think you may tell me it's got a, it's one mistake, I think. So here we go. It wasn't touched on. I don't think it wasn't touched on on the last few slides there. So text them to the chat box. Hey, there's no wrong answers, coaches. There's no wrong answers. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. So there's no wrong answers. So type them to see and let me know what you think Fergal is continually doing wrong. Okay, at his played. I I have it. I have it as on continuous play here, coaches. But I think you've seen enough. Okay, we'll move on to the next lad, John here. And John uh, made two deliberate errors. And again, again, I maybe one of them was touched on on the slides before. Not sure, but definitely one of them wasn't. So can you spot what John is doing wrong? One of them is continuous. And the second one was very close to the end, and I might stop it 
Um, no, I'll play it on. I'll, to see, again, it's in continuous play. So see, can you pick up uh, the two deliberate errors that John's doing on the toe tap? And as I said to you, I don't think they were touched on. One of them wasn't touched on earlier, if not two, on uh, during the slides there. Here we go. Text them, could text them to the chat box there. And Gareth will tell me at the fin as the finish up how many got them. How, well, the many got them. There's one a continuous one he's doing wrong when he's doing a toe tap. And then there's another one he uh, done at near the finish. This is a continuous really game. I'll maybe stop it when it comes to the other finish. But there's one he done at the very finish up. And as I say, it was deliberate. Can you catch it on? Can you catch it on? Okay, I'll just play the two there. Oh, and give you uh, another 15 seconds and then I'm going to let you know. What is the deliberate mistakes the lads are doing when they're doing the toe tap? Again, this is about spotting and fixing coaches. There will be players and, and there could be any age could be doing this. Yes, you're going to say to me, Tony, I know a player, not who one of the best ever players ever to play the game. And I think he drops the ball from the right hand to the left foot. Oh no, it's maybe the other way. From the left hand to the right foot. And he he does it continuous and he was one of the best players ever ever put on a, a jersey. Ever. And but there's this thing about I thought I said to you I mentioned about fatal flaws. You don't really have to fix it if it's not fatal. If it's not leading to bad control or losing control of the ball, why should you fix it? If he's if he or she's excellent at it, let it be. Let it be. But you'll find out uh, a lot of the time when they do the skill maybe wrong uh, from the coaching manual that 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 they are not perfect at it. So you 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 have to fix it if they're losing. So we'll just talk about it here now, and I'll stop one here. I'll let Fergal go. So. Fergus was he was Fergal was continually throwing the ball up to let it drop. And you don't do that. You roll the ball, the ball drops into your hand to, to, uh, till your till your foot. But he threw was throwing the ball up. So just think about it, coaches. That ball has to go further to the foot when he throws it up. So more chance of him making a mistake. Well, Fergal didn't, but there's a chance. It also give, gives an opponent a chance to come in to flick the ball away. It'll be longer out of his hands when he's throwing it up. So you just lower the hand down and drop it down onto the foot. The less space between your hand and the ball, you don't have to bend down, but the less space between the hand and the ball, the better chance of executing the skill. So that was Fergal. Now we'll go to John. John, two mistakes. What's the fortune here? Continuous coaches. He held the ball up too high. He should have lowered the hand down. Again, the less He's the ball way up near his chin there. So the ball, he's dropped it from, from, from too far. So he should be lowering the hand down. And the other mistake is, and I'm going to stop it, and I'm sure he's got it on. One of the times he caught the ball in one hand. And I think it's this one. Watch. He just caught it in one hand. Now, the coaching manual and the speaker presented for that said, yes, when you're starting the skill, uh, um, catch it in both hands. Yes, when they get good at it and all that, and maybe an opponent coming in from the side, you might have to do it with one hand. And it's something I'm going to touch on hopefully after we wait because I maybe touch on it now. Uh, I, I, if you go on to Mick Bowen, who manages the Dublin Senior Ladies team, I seen a couple of courses that he done one time um, with young ones, and uh, about, and he had each young one had two balls. One in the right hand and one in the left, and I've I've I've, I've done it in my own club here at the on age level, and they love it. They love it. Uh, in fact, they done it with with uh, these lads here last year. Uh, they they were on the thirteen, but you could do it. You could do it far younger. You can do it <laughs> fundamental stage eight, eight or nine. Anyway, you they'd be fit for it. But even maybe as I say, the advanced ones even earlier. But two footballs, one on right hand, one on left. Two tap right, catch one hand. Two tap left. Likewise, bouncing, right hand, left hand. Likewise, kicking off a wall or kicking to a partner. Kick the first one out of one hand and the, the partner has to catch the ball in one hand. There's no harm in that. 
absolutely there's no harm in that it gives them great control uh as i say they have they're on two, they're on two sides you know with the two balls they're practicing from, from both sides and i think it's a great activity the two balls you might say tony god i can't get hardly a uh two balls at soon and, and with a with a group of 20 but ah please god your club if you've done the good work will 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 get you football so as i say it's brilliant and as i say you could advise young ones that when they're at home they could do it with two footballs it doesn't have to be you know it can be a football whatever so um just two balls and practice and so um that was the two mistakes i think i've touched the two there so very uh, very good coaches for the ones who get they got that and okay uh we'll move on i think i said to, I, sh I said that john caught the ball in one hand yes and that was and as i say them lads done that uh deliberately for me for my course tonight right coaches i'm aware it's after five past eight so hopefully another 20 minutes will finish him here right this is a very interesting slide coaches i picked up this slide a few weeks ago because i knew i was delivering this course tonight and i knew you'd be interested in it now what i'm going to say before i talk about it is i'm not a hundred percent sure that the kick passes is is open play just only open play i'm pretty sure it's all open it's near enough it's open play but i can't put hand and heart and and say it uh but i'm pretty sure here I was, I would be, I'd be more than pretty sure that this is all from open play here. So, when you're looking here at the the 1980s, the 19, the 1980s, this is stats that was taken on kick passes in the game, uh, from open play in the 1980s, and you look at that there, and you'll see roughly about 175. Um, will you hold on now? To this one here. Yeah, nineteen eighties, roughly about one hundred and seventy-five kick passes on average on any game of county football in the nineteen eighties. And when you come across here, and this was taken in two, between two thousand fourteen and two thousand sixteen, a three-year span, there was uh, roughly about a hundred and thirty kick passes. So from a hundred and from one hundred and seventy-five to one hundred and thirty, um, there was there's less kick passes in the in the game more modern now than it was back in the 1980s 80s now we weren't we're not talking about kick pass today but i want to show you that but look to the right to the hand pass in the 1980s there was about 110 an average of 110 hand passes in every game in every game of county football there was roughly 110 hand passes 2014 to 2016 Look at that, over over 300 passes, maybe 300, maybe roughly 305 hand passes, and in, in a a game of a county game of Gaelic football. So that is some difference from 110 to over 300 hand passes. Uh, as I say, in that every average of every game of hand passes over 300 passes. So a lot more. So it's very important. That we coach the hand pass and fist pass. You know, you know, years ago or maybe not too long ago, we were talking about they were doing nothing but hand pass drills and and fist pass drills and soon and they weren't able to kick the ball. I think that has changed over the last lot of years, and I don't want it to change back. But I want you to think about folks and also don't forget about the hand pass. I've been watching the Gaelic football over the last two weeks on television, most of the games, and um, I'll tell you something now. The mistakes that's made uh, from a hand pass is unbelievable. You know, what makes a good hand pass, coaches? There's three ingredients for a good hand pass. The right height, the right direction, and the right weight. So it's not as handy as what people think. You have to have the right direction. If you don't have the right direct, if a player's run on the ball and you play it half behind him or towards him and has to wait on it, well, that wasn't a good hand pass. It, as I say, the, the, the and direction, the height, if you put it to his feet or over his head, it has to be, it's easy for him to catch. And the right weight, if you drive the ball at your teammate, 
should be just soft hands when whenever he's not a million miles away from you. Soft hands is an easier pass to get to, to catch. So that's an amazing stat, coaches. But I'm gonna show you something else now, uh, which you'll be now look at this one here. This is hot off the press. This is the seven championship games, Ulster senior championship games this year. And I have to thank, thank Owen McNichol, the sports science officer for the Ulster GA, to give, get me them stats so quick for my uh, webinar tonight here. And thanks, and thanks to Owen for doing that for me. So this is the games, the seven games that has been played in the Ulster Senior Football Championship this year. The primary round match, the four quarterfinals, and the two semifinals. And just look at the stats. To the left here, if I'm just going to put up the, sorry coaches. To the left here, it's attempted hand passes from play. And it's attempted, it's not successful, it's attempted. And let me tell you, watching the games over the last few weekends, there's been a lot, as I said to you earlier, there has been a lot of hand passes who went astray. You might say, Tony, the weather. The weather is not good. This time of the year, the Austin Championship, the weather is not good. It's not all about the weather. You know, we should be well used to the weather in Ireland, the country we live in. So uh, it's not all about the weather. A hand pass, a hand pass or a first pass, 99.9% of them should not be going astray. There's something going wrong. They're not passing the ball, maybe there's, there's something just not correct with it. So all I'm saying here, there's Antrim. Uh, and Owen has done this brilliant for me. Antrim versus Gavin. Donegal versus Tyrone. Down versus Fermanagh. Cavan versus Monaghan. Derry versus Armagh. Donegal versus Armagh. And Down versus Cavan. There was all the games over the last few weekends. Antrim 262 hand passes they had in their game against Gavin. In the same game, Gavin had 254 hand passes. Now, cross over to the right screen, right uh, slide here. In the same game, Antrim had 50 kick passes. Attempted, remember now. Both attempted. Not, they're not saying they were successful. And Gavin had 61. And believe it or not, this is an amazing stat now. Amazing stat. <laughs> of all the games was played, when you add up 262 and 254, you're getting 516. A total of 516 hand passes in that game. But even amazingly, more amazingly, is when you cross over to, to this here, 61 and 50, which is 111, that's, that has been the most kick passes in any game this year. So in that game, and believe it or not, I was in duty that day. I was asked to go along and help out. Um, um, just uh, with the situation and all, and uh, funny, I was, and that, and that game in Breffney was, I'd say it was the best day for for Gaelic football that is, uh, in the championship, in the Ulster championship over the last few weekends. It was a lovely day in Breffney, and the pitch was in lovely shape. But I'm saying to you, that's what uh, the hand passes, 516 in total in the game, and 111 kick passes. And you can look through the slides there yourself, coaches. Don't you go on Tyrone. The hand passes each team had, likewise down in Fermanagh, and likewise right down there. Hopefully you see the numbers there, that's coming out clear to you. If not, then as I say, you'll get the presentation on LCJ YouTube. Um, what else that stands out there? Maybe you'll spot some that stands out there. There's Armagh there with 130 hand passes against Donegal, and you cross over here. Uh, we see now, hold on, uh, and you cross over here, they had 36 kick passes and 130 hand passes. Donegal had 219 hand passes and 49 kick, kick passes. Again, I want to stress, uh, attempted. They, might, they were not all successful. So, uh, and here over here to the right, interesting one here down. Down at 15, 15 kick passes last Sunday against Calvin. And they had 182 hand passes. Calvin had 171 uh, hand, and 35 kick passes. But it just shows you, again, uh, last Sunday wasn't a great day for Gaelic football. Maybe it wasn't Maybe it wasn't the day put to be putting the, the ball down to foot. You can, so you can understand that. So then, that's that's some very interesting craft coaches. I, I enjoy that stuff, quite honestly. And I thank, I thank Owen again for getting me this so quick. So uh, 
hopefully you get some out of that there. And I've another one to show you here, coaches, that you'll be. Now, there's the whole thing put together. Now, this is an amazing one. See down the bottom, hopefully you see this. Irish hand passes. And uh, the blue is the 1980s, as you see there. The yellow or, or it's orange or whatever the color it is, is 2014, 2016. And the green is 2020. Now, hand passes. An average in 80s, 110, that, which you talked about. 2014, 2016, which you, I've already showed you this. I just wanted you to put this in the one graph for you. An average of 300, and that's uh, roughly in that between 14 and 16, an average in that period. And then this year in the championship over our seven games, the average hand passes per game is 403. Look how much it has went up the years. But let me tell you, wait, I'm going to say something here. Uh, and I played, <laughs> I played a wee bit myself uh, back in the 80s and, the, and the, uh, some of the 90s, whatever. But uh, no, ah, yes, but, you know, the game has, uh, the Gaelic football, uh, we have a great game. We have a great, great game and the skill level is unbelievable. Uh, to, uh, you know, it's, I believe it's rising all the time. So, uh, you know, what I'm saying is it's all about keeping possession and not being stilly with the ball. I think maybe back in the 80s, we were kicking the ball a lot more and we, we weren't sure where it was going to be, to, to be quite honest. Uh, so so it's, it's a lot more thought about put into the game. Now, go across, I'm just going to briefly touch because we're not working on kick passes tonight. So I'm just going to briefly touch on that there, the kick passes. Uh, again, uh, in the 80s, there was 170 uh, kick passes in the game. Average kick passes 175. Uh, the average kick passes in 2014, 2016, 130. We've all discussed, we've all seen that in the last few slides. And now an average of 82 kick passes in every game. 82. From, as I say, in the 80s, 175, 130 to 82. So there's a lot more care taken when you're possession. It's, it's not good to give it away. And, you know, that's that's the key. And, and you know, that's when you look at results and you look at teams and you look at performance, the team that can keep the ball, yes, the kick's important. And when, But when it's on, yes, the long kick, the ball in early into the full forward line, even the ball, as the boy talks about, the bear in the square. Uh, if, you have, if you have a bear in the square, it's, still, it's a dangerous ball, especially with the new square ball rule. And now you can go on as soon as the ball's kicked. And, and the direct ball's great. But as I say, there's times there's getting that right balance. So, very good. Hopefully you've got some out of that, coaches. So we'll move on. Right, we're going to go on now. We're going to go on to the hand pass here now. We're going to talk about it, uh, uh, how, how it should be, uh, errors of it and how it should be done. So hopefully that's a play, coaches. Uh, I'll send the red up. Hopefully another 15 minutes, 10 minutes will finish me. Here we go, hand pass. Context, okay. That's one well by Sean Cabana. Another under-21 star outside to Kevin Hughes. Calm. Gavin Devlin always playing it away quickly with his hands. Doesn't ever hold on too long. The goal gave them a real boost. A carry of designs on another score. And another goal for Brosnan! And directly before that, good pass. Very well way to pass from the Gooch there. The hand pass is a basic technique in Gaelic football used to pass the ball over a short distance. The technique involves supporting the ball in one hand and striking it with the open free hand. The technique shown here is the open-handed hand pass. MacDonald wanting Dylan away from him to provide a better angle. Fresh and butter, so it seemed. Take it in quickly here to Mossy Quinn. Back towards Bonner. There's a player in support. Couple of players there. Bonner, the killing for him. It's another one. Sullivan. Moynihan. The angled ball across. They do that time and again. Cooper, the layoff here for Declan O'Sullivan. They stop inside to Donahue. Back. Go. Unable to cut inside. And Kerry hounding him, forcing him back. Billy Joe Patton. Little chip ahead to McDonald. Breaking it this time. In comes Aiden Higgins. Dishing it off here to O'Neill. Go. Okay, you see, important the hand pass. As I say, when players are running, 
towards the goals and the speed. They need that ball played in front of them towards the hands. The boy says, hold out that hand in front. Instead of them scores would not have happened unless the pass was perfect. Perfect. That, you know, into, as the boy says, hit the space, not the face. And whenever you're running to, uh, towards, you're looking that ball in, in space in front of you. As I say, you're showing the hand. There's what I wanted that. Instead of playing it till tell where he was at a split second ago or she was at and they're going to have to stop and delay and wait on the ball to get to that's and that's not just simple completely simple as we get now as i say, say it again the right direction the right height and the right weight so we're going to the coaching points of the hand pass here we see the hand pass technique being performed by an elite player note the position of the head hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the hand pass. Support the ball in the palm of one hand in front of the body. Face the target. Swing back and extend the striking hand. Keep eyes on the ball. Lean forward and strike through the middle of the ball with the open hand using mostly the fingertips. The supporting hand must remain steady. Follow the strike through in the direction of the pass. While striking the ball, step forward with the foot on the opposite side. Okay, and we'll move on. Here we see common errors for the hand pass. Hitting the ball with the wrong part of the hand is a common error when learning the open-handed hand pass technique. This may result in the pass being misdirected or not reaching its target. To correct this error, ensure that the player strikes the ball using mostly the fingertips. Not using a definite striking action is another common error when performing the hand pass technique. This may be interpreted as a throw, resulting in a foul against the player and the award of a free kick to the opposition team. To correct this error, ensure the player keeps the supporting hand steady as the ball is being struck. Okay. Hitting the ball with... And there's a uh, hand pass coaching card. Uh, coaches. Um, gives you all the key uh, points on that. So... Um, as I say, you get all what you want. You get all you, all the details in there. Okay, we're going to move on now to the first pass. Over the first hour of the contest, that's a nice ball in. The fist pass is a variation of the hand pass technique in Gaelic football, used to pass the ball over a short distance. The technique involves supporting the ball in one hand and striking it with the closed fist of the free hand. A fisted pass will travel a greater distance than an open-handed hand pass. Also, it is important to note that a fisted pass may be used to score a point, but an open-handed hand pass may not. It's there for the losing for Mayo at this stage. They'll hardly get a better chance of getting to the semis. Now here's Derek Kavanagh to Brendan Jarrah Sullivan. But the perception there of that pass coming through. Too good to have pass, but the quality of the finish rips it into the top. Okay. Okay, and we'll move on here. Uh, I I think I maybe forgot to say, coaches, there may have been some we point are wrong in that last slide um i'll just move on here and we'll maybe come back to that in a second hold on now do we just move it on to the coaching points here we see the fist pass being performed by an elite player note the position of the head hands and feet now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the fist pass Support the ball in the palm of one hand in front of the body. Face the target. 
swing back and extend the striking hand. Keep the eyes on the ball. Lean forward and strike through the middle of the ball with the fist using the broad surface formed by the middle bones of the fingers, the side of the thumb and the heel of the hand. Keep the supporting hand steady. Follow the strike through in the direction of the pass. While striking the ball, step forward with the foot on the opposite side. OK. Common errors, coaches. Striking the ball from underneath is a common error when learning the fist pass technique. This may result in the pass being too high. To correct this error, ensure the player strikes through the middle of the ball with the fist using the broad surface formed by the middle bones of the fingers, the side of the thumb and the heel of the hand. Throwing the ball from the supporting hand before the fist makes contact is another common error when performing the fist pass technique. This may result in the player making no contact with the ball or the player losing control and power in the pass. To correct this, ensure that the player holds the ball in the supporting hand until the fist makes contact. Failing to keep the holding hand stationary is another common error when performing the fist pass technique. This may result in a free being awarded against the player for not using a definite striking action or for throwing the ball. To correct this error, ensure that the player keeps the supporting hand steady throughout the technique to show a clear striking action. Coaches, what I'm going to do here now, uh, I, 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 I think I missed the wee thing, coaches, and I'm just going to touch on here. In the fist pass context, I'm going to ask you here, did you pick up something on the fist pass context that's maybe not a right, no, it's not maybe, definitely not right. These videos have been done uh, a number of years ago in Crow Park, but there was something that was said in this, I'm not going to play it again. Did any of you pick it up? what was said that's not in the rules now, that's, that's changed in the rules, I'll put it like that. Put it in your chat box and Gareth will pick it up if you can get it. I'm going to let you, I'm going to, uh, let you know now in very short, as I say, I'm not going to play it again, but uh, you, might have, you might have picked it up. Um, what I will say here, coaches, is I'm going to move back to where I was at there. Striking. Uh, to the fist pass coaching, uh, the fist and pass coaching guard. But I'm going to say a couple of things before I move on from the fist pass. Uh, yes, the, the 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 speaker, the speaker or the commentator is right. Uh, but <clears throat> he was talking about fisting or hand passing right behind the ball. I'm sure this coach is on here and it's, will be ready to question me. This usually, especially when there's distance between you and your teammate and you're past the ball. There's usually a slight elevation on the ball. If you would you agree with me? A slight elevation. Just a slight elevation. So if you straight you know, because it'll take it'll take the ball that wee bit further to your teammate if they're further away. If it's close, yes, directly behind the ball. What I'm saying is you possibly will be striking. Uh you might have seen the player striking the ball. He was striking it uh sort of not underneath the ball, but the lower the lower part of the, of behind the ball to get that wee bit of slight elevation and 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 yes there'll be times there'll be times they're talking about the you no know, at the very start there but the proper the, the key points and all that but you're going to say tony when when is the not when there's an opposition player between you and your teammate yes there that's a dangerous pass but uh it it can be executed properly if you put the right height on it. So you'd have to be striking underneath the ball to get the ball over the opponent to your teammate. But the, the, this is about, um, as I say, when you're starting off, and nah, it's more when you're starting off. It's, you know, what uh, them are the key points. So uh, I just want to touch on that there. And the one that I must, coaches, or you likely got, and I meant to mention to you, and that slide, 
a couple of slides previous. It did say that you're allowed to first pass the ball, or first uh, a, a, a point, but you are not allowed to hand pass a point. That was maybe back a number of years ago, but now, as I say, you can hand pass or first pass a point. But I'm sure you picked up on that very quickly and you're going to let me know at the end of the show. So thank you for that. Right, we're getting on well here. First to pass coaching card. And now this one here, coaches, I want to show you this one here before I go. Um, the five stages of passing. And this can be done at the fundamentals. Can a, can a seven-year-old do this? Yes, absolutely. Can a six-year-old do this? Absolutely. They might not be pat they might not be striking the ball with their hand the first, but they can be throwing it. But uh, they'll have the concept in their head about what the pass is, receiving the ball. Uh the first touch is so important. So receiving the ball either from a throw, it's learning how to catch a ball. But this is the five stages of passing. Number one, as you see, static passer sends to static receiver. So watch these two lads, uh John and Fergal. You see the head, hands, feet? Head, hands, and the feet. You see the way leading from the pass of the right and 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 the leading of the left foot or le left leg? Do you see it stepping out? That's the perfect way. Stepping out. Both of them stepping out. This is a continuous reel, coaches, so it's continuing to play for you. So he's just uh the, you see both of them taking a step out with the opposite leg when they're striking the ball. So that's static passing. That's the first stage of passing. Now, you could do that with very young ones throwing the ball. If they're not able to pass the ball, throwing the ball. You could have them, you know what I mean? You know, as I say, you can throw the ball. You don't have to be, but that's the first stage. Number two, well, the first stages could be thrown, but I'm sort of giving you an idea of the skill of the hand pass, first pass here. Number two, passer delivers to a static receiver and moves to another space. You're getting your young ones right away tuned in to thinking when they pass the ball to move. It's no point in modern day Gaelic football to pass and stand. If you watch your teams now, cornerbacks, wingbacks, everybody's going up to score. Everybody's going up to set up scores. So you're encouraging your young players at a start to pass and move. So just watch. So Fergal passes and he moves to another space. John passes and moves to another space. Fergal passes and moves to another space. And John passes and moves to another space. So you pass and move. Now, can you pick up one thing? Uh, well, no, you don't have to go to the text, but, uh, the, uh, the chat box this time. Uh, and you know, I let this run because this is good. Main, we talked about the fatal flaw. Well, if you notice Fergal is stepping forward, but John and this we video didn't step forward. Do you notice this leg? John, this we see, hold on now. You'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about here. This lad here, look, he passes and his two feet together. Uh, they're spread apart, but they're not. He doesn't have the foot, one foot out in front, but he's still fit to execute the skill. So it's not really a, it's not a fatal flaw. He's fit to do it. So everything's maybe not done by the coaching manual. So he's still fit to do it. And I, I, I noticed the night and says, I'll just let it sit like that to explain to you what the fatal flaw is. That's not, that's 100% because they say it's not fatal to him. He's still able to get the pass. But let me tell you, coaches, my advice is uh, uh, if you've seen a young one doing that, you change it. You would tell them to do what Fergus doing there, stepping out, and like the first slide, number one, uh, stepping out and then pass. So don't. Don't encourage this standing uh, two feet, uh, two 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 feet to sort of have no no stepping out. Don't don't encourage that. Have the step out. Right. Number three is passer moves and delivers and move. Passer moves and delivers the static receiver, which is that wee bit harder. So this time the passer's moving when he's when he's passing. That's a bit harder. Now that's a very short video, but it's just on a continuous reel. So look, that's very that's trickier. Because you're on the move when you're passing. So you have to get the, 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 the connection right to the ball. You have to get the right weight. You have to get the right height. You have to get the, uh, the right direction when you're on the move. So remember, coaches, as I said, this can be done at six and seven years age. No bother. And then they'll be fair advanced. And then you're going to say to me, Tony, the other, yes, the other hand, two hands. Yes, maybe make sure they sort of have the nucleus and the base 
of the force of the stronger hand first. I wouldn't be pushing them onto their weaker side till they have their fit to do it. Uh, you know, even stamping or whatever. When they're fit to do that, then you can move them on. But uh, definitely move them on to a weaker side. But not, not, not when you're just practicing the strong side. Make sure they have one near enough before you you practice all the other one. Okay. Uh, and then, as I said at the start, some children are a wee bit slower than other children. You might have to keep. You might have to just persevere, and they'll always come. They'll, you give them every chance. You praise, 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 praise. Fun, fun, fun. You, the child will prosper and get better. I guarantee it. Okay, number four. This time, a static passer delivers to a moving receiver. This is even harder. Now, this time, you're. You're you're taking the ball on the move, so the uh, so the passer has to try to get the as I talked about the right way. Get well if it's if he's running onto the he has to get out in front of him. If he's running towards him, then it's a straight pass past the chest. So it's getting the right direction, weight and height again. So that's a bit harder again uh, to perform. And then number five, you're going to say it, coaches. You know what? Both passer and receiver move. This is a the full thing. This is what. This is a complete article there. Two players are moving. This is going to get, going to get uh, in the game, as I say. You'll see even senior players doing that type of stuff there on the move, taking the ball uh, in groups, whatever. So just on the move, pass the ball to each other. Both players on the move, passing and receiving. Now, so that's the five stages of passing, coaches. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, and I'll just move on here. When you're finished, I'm sure you're glad. Right, that's what we're near enough there. Take away messages. Uh, and, 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 and importance of being good at the skills of the game. First touch, that's a skill. First touch is a skill. So the more times the ball is passed to a wee player, they'll improve their first touch. Wonders of opportunity. As I talked about four to seven, the fundamentals. Then the next stage, learn to train. See up to that 12 years age, coaches. If the work's done up to that, there's an old saying, especially, see, you, you can't teach a old dog new tricks. So what I'm saying is, <coughs> if you can get all the, the fundamentals right, and that can learn to train stage, which is all the skills of the game, into match practice, into games, games, full ga condition games, full games, uh, at, at, at that learn to train stage, you're, you're going to be uh, pulling good players through uh, both boys and girls. Simplify the messages and let them play. I can't say that enough tonight. Let them play. If it's not broke, don't fix it. As I said earlier, unless it's a fatal flaw. If, it's, if they're not executing the skill and they're not doing it by what we we're talking about tonight and the videos we showed tonight and they're not doing it by the manual, then you got to come back. you got to fix it. And as I say, don't, and I don't want to bore you here, don't go on too long. Don't, don't forsake taking a wee boy. You know, the best thing at all these levels is having plenty of coaches to help you. And and if you have, and a wee if a boy or girl doing a continuous thing wrong, yes, there's no harm taking taking that wee person out for, for very little time. Very little. And don't make it obvious every night. Don't be taking that same person out every night because that can be embarrassing for a young one. But in your own quiet way, you can get the wee points across. Well, it's a quiet ward in the year or taking them out for a, a minute or so, but getting them back into the activity of the game again, but don't keep them out too long. And again, don't stop and start session, uh, spotting and fixing the whole night, because that's going to disrupt your session. Just do that with care. Just know when to spot and fix. Don't talk too long. Don't talk too long. More play and less talk. Just let them play. Knowledge is no substance for being caring. I think that's a great statement in blue. Creating a positive learning environment. It's no, I'm telling you, all the knowledge, the most knowledge of person doesn't matter if you don't have that caring thing. If you don't have that respect for every child you're there. If you have 20 children in the session, number 20 should be treated like number one. There should be no difference in every child. How do you like, how do you like your child to be treated? Well, you treat everybody else the same. And every child deserves to be called by the first name and it deserves respect and deserves to get, as I say, the same the same treatment as what you think is your best players. And that's a must because one of them weaker children could be your best player for your club 
in uh, in 10, 15 years' time. And uh, you can say to yourself, look, and be proud of that. Be proud of that, that you play, played a part in that. You should be so happy when you see a player come through at senior level and you take them at on the age level. You should be so proud to say that you, 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 you're you part of that uh, uh, player's development. And then uh, the bowl rate and finish up players and children, people might not remember what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. I think that's key. They'll not remember everything you say, but they will remember how you made them feel. When they go into adult life, when they go into their, even to their little life, they'll always talk about who, they're, who the coach or the manager that, uh, that, they, that they really loved and really thought they were so caring and, and that's why important coaches. I couldn't straight know you can, <clears throat> yes, it's important to spot and fix. Yes, it's important to, to uh, deliver your session, all that. But as I say, treat every child and make them feel important. Be caring. Be caring. It's all about fun. It's all about enjoyment. People say, Tony, I, it, it, you know, it's every level. Yes, you want to win. And why not? One surely. If you can win, one surely. But as I say, think about your players and give them every. Uh, there's some resources, coaches, um, um, links that you can click onto and you'll get all the resources you want. Hey, coaches, there's so many different uh, websites out there now. God, the stuff you can get online now for coaching. You should be no. You should have no shortage of drills or games or whatever you want. Uh, and you don't need you don't need three, two or three bookfuls of games and drills. You don't need it. It's, I'll say it again. Yes, it's good to have good content and all that. But you don't have to change the session every night. Let's correct. Oh, I need to do something different. I need to do something different. I need to do something different. No, no, you don't have to be changing night, 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 night. Not at all. It's how you deliver. It. It's how you make the children feel. That's what they'll remember. Uh, questions please thank you so much and i went on for an hour and 15 minutes and i am i apologize but anyway right we'll hand you back to we'll hand you back to gareth here to see all any questions and we'll be we'll nice and quick coaches sorry about that thanks tony i don't think anyone would mind tony that that extra wee bit that was top class as usual and um, tony there's a right couple of questions through here okay. so we'll, we'll maybe look maybe at five or six of them um, uh, and try to combine some of the questions that, that we're not repeating them so First question here, Tony. Um, what age should we coach children to fist or hand pass? <laughs> well, there's no, there's no way. Hey, hey, I know children around my own club here. I know young ones at five and six, they have it, they have it. And then there's other children, uh, uh, take some time. So, uh, you know, th there's no certain age. You'll know in your group, as I said earlier, maybe I think I did say it. No, whenever you're doing that very young age, if a, wee, if a wee person can't, a wee player can't do it, throw the ball at the start. Throw it, throw it. You no, know, roll the ball to receive at the start, whatever, and throw it. But there's no, there's some, every player uh, advances at a, at a different time, but there's no reason, no reason. Well, put it like a CT. Uh, especially on the at on the eight level, they should be execu executing the skill, no problem. So seven, six, seven, eight, whatever. Okay. Okay, brilliant. Um, you obviously went went through the difference of the fist pass and the hand pass. So which is the best and most accurate pass? Is it either the fist pass or the hand pass? Well, well I'll answer that one, Gareth. Uh, because I I have, I have my own feelings in this one. I'm a wild man for the underarm hand pass. Well, the overarm hand pass is gone now. That's a free against you. But the underarm hand pass, more so in the first pass. Why? Why do I say that? I say that because you have a, a bigger target. And I think the, 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 the presenter or the commentator of the night was talking about using the fingers. You use some, maybe the middle of your hand d down towards your fingers. You don't use way up by the, towards the thumb, whatever. Uh, and oops, fingers spread. Look at the target you have. Look at the target compared to a closed hand. So what I'm saying is, if you feel there's no problem, if there's no harm practicing the fist pass, absolutely. But is that the target's a lot smaller. It's harder to hit the sweet spot of the ball. Harder to hit the sweet spot. More. That's my opinion. I think there's more chance of the pass going astray with a closed hand, which is a fist, compared to an open hand. Bigger target, easier to hit the sweet spot. Okay, brilliant, Tony. Um, what games and drills are best for improving soloing and hand passing with both sides? 
Oh God, 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 God. Um, uh, let me see how long he went. I think I did touch about it on earlier on there. I think I touched about that on that earlier on coaches that I uh, about. I mentioned the war. I mentioned the man McBoven. Uh, uh, the two, the two footballs. Uh, right foot, left foot. Hey, uh, another. Uh, right, well, if you have two footballs, one in each hand, and you have to drop the ball to the right foot for the right toe tap and the left for the left, you have. To, the, but that's both sides, and they they can't get out of it when they're for two footballs. Uh, they have to do it with with, with both feet. Uh, another one is, um, uh, which I know uh, a lot of coaches does in their training. With her on the eights, or whatever, or on the tens, or whatever the case would be. Um, uh, sock up, sock down. Uh, just play a wee, whenever you're playing your game and training coaches, just for maybe five minutes, just right, boys and girls. Oh, well, well, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, five minutes on the weak side there, sock up for your weak side. So whenever you're refereeing the game, you know right away are they on their are they kicking with their weak side or whatever the case would be so just a sock up or even i know a coach one time had wristbands and he put the wristband on their weak side so when he whenever and whenever they were refereeing the game he knew or, or she knew what, what, what that, that they were on their weak side so just wee simple things like that there brilliant absolutely brilliant thanks tony listen there's just another one's come in here tony it's maybe an add-on to that how long would you spend on skills in comparison to games, uh, I'm I'm a wild man for I'm a wild man for games. Not all the time, and especially at young age level, you have to do skills. You have to do drills. I don't like the word drills, coaches. I'd rather have the word act activities, uh, which is the same, <laughs> which is the same as drills. I just don't like drills because uh, I'm worried sometimes coaches do drill does drills from morning to night in a session, and they're the wee players are not learning. No, the younger they are. They need, they need drills at all age level, they need activities, but don't forget about the game. And as I said during the session there, uh, whole part, whole, part, whole part, uh, you decide, but don't forget about the games because as I said to you, we Johnny, we Mary, will, will have more decisions to make in a game than asking to run to a cone or a cap the whole, or mark the whole night. That's, but there's, there's space for drills, absolutely. Brilliant, thanks Tony. Um, how do you manage with varying standards within a group? Uh, that's a good one, and you know this. I well, well, that's a good one, and I've I've worked with uh, on the age in my own club here, and and you know when I've I've seen it that even you no, know, there's no uh, make no difference, coaches, make no difference. Let that ch child or whoever it is, whatever no age, they should be involved with the main group. Uh, no matter if, uh, no difference, no, uh, how, how can you handle that, Tony, you're going to ask? Yes, when you're playing UE games, make sure you match your players off when you're selecting the teams that there's two players of the same um, ability, marking each, marking each other. And uh, they, then whenever you see one of them progressing uh, or whatever, or put them onto a player a wee bit, uh, a wee bit more stronger, a wee bit more skillfuler. Uh, but don't be putting your weakest player onto the strongest player in your training because that's not, not, not. You don't do the things like that. But just select your teams at training and select them nice and even and make sure the individual, uh, as you, know, you want to call them battles, the individual battles is with two players around the same ability. But don't be, don't be doing, I don't think you mean anything by that question anyway. Don't be taking all the stronger gears and boys up the top of the end of the field and taking the, the lesser players down. Don't do that. That's only my advice. Don't do that. I don't think it's a great idea. I think if you want them players to improve, they have to be in among the best. Um, everybody's the same. Didn't I say about treating everybody the same? During it, you, you're not treating people the same. I That's my opinion if you divide them up too much. Okay. Um, at what stage do you start working on the weaker side? Yeah, uh, what stage you start working on the weaker side? Uh, whenever, they, whenever I think I mentioned it during the presentation, whenever they have sort of done that phase one that I talked about, the three phases, when they've done that phase one with no pressure on their stronger side, and when they have that, for example, it's a toe tap. If they've done their toe tap and they have it, 
then get them onto the le left side. As I say, at phase one, starting there, just to tap, just learn to tap the ball. So, uh, you know, there's no age because everybody, as I said, again, develops, but don't be, uh, don't be afraid to introduce it, as I say. I, I shouldn't be saying any age, but, you know, it's, you know, I know players, we, we boys and girls, seven, eight, there's no bother on which side. So that might be eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. At around that age level, they should be practicing, definitely, on both sides. Okay. And... Why are you not putting more emphasis on scoring with the fist? Oh, that's, that's a good question. That's a good question. We're doing a, we're doing. I showed the weapons to start there, and we're doing one in a week's week time or a couple of months time on kicking with scores. So that's a good question. Well, uh, hey. I do. I would in my my wee sessions, even the yeah, young ones. Uh, I would be uh, doing uh, fisting the ball over the bar, and I'd be encouraged in the game scenario and all that too. And, uh, uh, so uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not ignoring the, f the fisting or oh, hand passing the ball over the bar. Absolutely not. And it's something, as I say, you can do, but you don't have to be doing it every night. You know, every night and thing, but you're encouraging the game and all that. And there's no harm getting, especially young ones, used till uh, till hand passing or fisting the ball over the bar. But as I say, it's not a, it's not some. You know, you only have them once or twice a week, coaches. So as I say, it's it's good to make them aware of it and practice it. But as I say, there's also all very important things to do. Okay, Tony, we have two more questions here. Yes. Um, should we have a one to a one toe tap and one bounce to minor level? I do this. Hey, uh, I'm going to answer that good and quick because I, I was thinking about that. So uh, that that happens in some counties. That happens in the counties in Ulster. I know uh, definitely. I, I know one or two of them. It happens, and it doesn't happen in my own county here. Don't, no, it doesn't happen in my own county. No, no. But definitely, it's something I think would be great. I think it'd be brilliant. I know what happens in one or two at least other counties in Ulster and I think it's absolutely brilliant it lets everybody play it stops the dominant player from running the whole length of the field uh, and he or she will get a, a big surprise when it comes to senior level they're not able to do it and so it, it's not developing it's not developing that player anything and it's certainly not developing the other players who stand watching so uh, yes I would I have no problem I think it would be a great, a great um, thing to bring in absolutely okay uh, last question Tony and um, when under eights are playing the game, should they be encouraged to keep to the rules? Some kids do, but most others don't. They seem to throw the ball, run without soloing, over carry, etc. Ah, well, you, that, that person could be right, that coach could be right, maybe on date, maybe I'm saying about, I was saying they're both sides on date, whatever. There is, there is players, I know it, uh, I don't date can took up both sides. Yes, there's all the players, and I, I, I think I did say it in my presentation. No, I did mention the word throw, and there might be players up to nine or ten. Um, but I would be, you no, know, I would be from seven on, I would be encouraging the eight, and I'd be encouraging them to, to try to, you know, don't, I wouldn't let them off too long with it, but, but as I said to you, every player has to be treated the same. And there'll be some players will not get it. There'll be some, let's say, there'll be some players will not get it maybe till 10 or 11 or 12, but most of the rest of them will have it. So are you going to blow up that wee player all the time just because they can't get the grasp of the, of the skill? No, I would, and I've done it in the past. I would play the game on, say nothing. Yes, I would talk to them, I'd try to advise them to practice at home and all that and all that crap, but I would not. I would not be blowing them up and blowing a whistle because not, I'd guarantee that we player will not come back if it's only one or two. You're, you know, that coach might be saying all their groups doing it. Yes, if all their groups doing it, then um, then you'll try your best to try to get them onto the, the proper hand pass or kick pass. Uh, uh, and if it's not happening, then give it a wee bit of time. Don't panic. Don't panic. It'll, they'll come. They'll come. Okay, thanks, Tony. Listen, I'm sure that we could probably keep asking questions all night, but uh, I think you've probably covered a lot there. And, and Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Time's up at this stage. So, um, yes. well, listen, that, that, that was excellent, Tony. And I'm sure um, we, had, we had 120 people on, on signed on this evening, and I'm sure everyone really, really enjoyed that and have taken away lots of things that they can put into their own coaching now when, when we get opened up and back out in the grass. So thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.